flaws in it. But as far as in the English is concerned, there are great revelations regarding that. But let's look at this particular version here. So that you may be edified. Not sounding as a tingling symbol. As our brother Shaul spoke. Let's look at the same chapter and verses. I'm just going to read it to you. John, Yehukanon chapter 10. And it says this here. Verse 22, it says, It was now winter, and Yahushua was in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah, the festival of dedication. And some people pronounce it Hanukkah. Many of you have heard of this. But this is not, thank you, my father, my king. This is not what you're seeing is as far as as they call it Hanukkah today or Hanukkah, which means dedication. Many of you know this. What you're seeing is a more modern and a more Jewish, as they call it, influence and expression regarding what is being expressed here. Do you understand? Now, there's a footnote that I would like to read to you, as our Father and our King give me permission to read it to you, for edification purposes. It says, Hanukkah, or Hanukkah, was a winter festival that commemorated the rededication of the temple after it had been defiled by Antiochus. It says, 175 through 163 B.C. You see this? It's Antiochus IV. It says 200 years before Christ, before the Messiah, Greek soldiers captured and pillaged the Jerusalem temple, took its treasures and artifacts, and made it unusable for worship. In the winter of 165 through 164 B.C., a Jewish army, or Hebrew army, led by Judas Maccabeus, reclaimed the temple and rededicated to Yahuwah. It says the Lord here in this Bible. The festival of Hanukkah dedication marked this dedication. And then all of a sudden this note refers you to, or it refers us, to 1 Maccabees chapters 3 through 4. And 2 Maccabees chapter 8, 1 through 10. Wait a minute. Did you just hear what I read to you? My brothers and sisters. Now, this is something interesting about men of higher education, as they have the title scholar. Many of the pastors today, or so-called pastors today, well-educated men who go to seminary schools, they know about this information. But here's the rhetorical question for us to reflect on. Why? During the time in this classification of our ignorance, you would very seldomly have ministers or leaders who say that they represent the Most High in His Word. Why haven't they spoke to us these matters? First of all, we have enough knowledge to understand that the book of Maccabees is not even in what they call the canonized collections, as far as 66 books is concerned. But it seems that Yahuwah, Heavenly Father, has allowed these men of higher learning and higher education to basically tell on themselves and to give us information. The key is, is that when Yahuwah leads you, to go and to investigate, you understand, you must do it with his mind. To try the spirits to see if it be of him, do you understand? So something happened, my brothers and sisters. Do you see this? Many of you are familiar with this version, as far as what they call the uh, Schofield version, King James version. But what happens today is that many people, what they do, who
who have a desire to want to preach the word of our Heavenly Father, His Messiah, is they tend to preach teachings based on this gentleman's he on his on his opinion. So as Yahuwah allows me to go into this authorized version regarding these notes, I'm not going to teach you this man's philosophy or beliefs. We know that many of these scholars who are well-educated had to protect their reputations. But let's see what Mr. Schofield says. And many of you who may have it, I'm reading from page 985, where it says, from Malachi to Matthew. Briefly with this here. It says here, I'm reading from the third paragraph, excuse me, the fourth paragraph. And many of you can see it for yourself. It says, December, he says, this gentleman here, says December 25th, B.C., 168 B.C., Antiochus offered a sow upon the great altar and erected an altar to Jupiter. Do you see that? Do you see that, my brothers and sisters? Let me hold it up so you can see it. You see that there? December 25th. Many of you have it. So you can pause it and look at it. And some of these people who, some of these ministers, many of them have it. And they know of the things that Yahuwah has allowed me to speak to you. They know it already. So there's information that's given regarding this time. And that this man, Antiochus, who many of you never heard in your churches, that on a particular day that we have called Christmas, this deed was done. Hmm. Something to think about, isn't it? Listen. He says, this is the desolation. Now, this is his opinion. He says, this is the desolation of Daniel, the 8th eighth, eighth chapter, 13th verse. Type of the final abomination of desolation of Matthew 24, verse 15. The temple worship was forbidden and the people compelled to eat swine's flesh. Do you see this? See, something wicked happened. Of course, these things were, we're going to see and try the spirit. But we know that in the Torah, in the law, in the old covenant, our Heavenly Father prophesied that if the Hebrews, if the Israelites were to rebel against him, that many atrocities would come upon them. Do you see this? Listen, my brothers and sisters. It says section, section 4. The excesses of Antiochus provoked the revolt of the Maccabees. One of the most heroic pages of history. Do you see this? Matthias, or Matatyahu, the first of the Maccabees, a priest of great sanctity and energy of character, began the revolt. So it seems that Mr. Schofield, who is well exalted as far as men of knowledge, is revealing that he had access to certain records that we didn't have access when we was in these churches. Do you see this? But these men who go to these seminary schools that have degrees on their wall who are highly esteemed know this information. But many of them, what they didn't tell us, did they? As they preached to us on December 25th with a Christmas tree in the background. You understand? Many who lied and said that this was the Messiah's birthday. Do you understand?
Listen. It says here, he did, speaking of the Maccabees, says he did, speaking of Mr. the uh, Matthias, he did little more than to gather a band of godly and determined Jews, pledge to free the nation and restore the ancient worship, and was succeeded by his son Judas, or Yehuda, known in history as Maccabeus from the Hebrew word for hammer. He was assisted by four brothers who was Simon, of excuse me, of whom Simon is best known. The understand. My brothers and sisters. It says in 165 BC, Judas regained possession of Jerusalem, purified and rededicated the temple, an event celebrated in the Jewish feast of the dedication. The, you see this. So and I as you I'll stop there. So it's interesting that Mr. Schofield had information, and not just him, but many men that were of high education regarding this piece of dedication. Now, so why is it, my brothers and sisters? That when I hold up, or when we are today, when you hold up your King James Bible, okay, it's certain information that you do not have. But in the 1611 King James Bible, we have what is known, many of you know that it's called the Apocrypha, which means hidden. Do you see this? And you are not to just leap in this. But as you who it leads, you understand. So even as I'm led to read to you today, you all are obligated to try the spirit and see if it be of the most high. Do you understand? Let's go into first Maccabees. Chapter 1. And let's see if Mr. Schofield was correct. Starting, many of you know of the Apocrypha, uh, Mac, 1 Maccabees, chapter 1, starting at verse 41. It says, Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. So according to what's being stated here, what we are beginning to see is a form of, as, they, as many, of, many of us know this today, as a new world order. Or as far as bringing a, a oneness, if you will. To, as far as bringing them to, a, to one mentality. Verse 43, yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. Now, those of you out there who are, uh, who are very passionate about the Shabbat, we all know that the Shabbat pointed to a particular one. And that man's name is Yahushua. We understand that. So what you're seeing here, when it says the profane of the Shabbat, is speaking of also a profane of what the Shabbat pointed to and who it points to. Do you understand? Listen. Verse 44. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Yehuda, that they should follow the strange laws of the land. Do you see this now? It says, and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days. So what we're seeing, and according to the prophecies, our Heavenly Father said that he would do away with 